European Parliament uh, from Malta and she joins us now. Miriam Daly, thank you very much for your time. So EU foreign ministers are going to be meeting to discuss this issue, uh, but they've discussed it already. It just seems that now, would you think that it's rather than a political issue for them become a humanitarian one because of the sheer numbers of people that are dying? I just hope that we arrived at a point where um, the governments of all the member states would consider this as a humanitarian issue because so far we had a lot of talk after each tragedy that happened in the Mediterranean. Um, we talk a lot about bold action and yet this bold action never arrives and we still are seeing these tragedies which are always increasing in number. We are speaking about over 1,000 persons who have lost their life in the Mediterranean in a matter of just a week. And I would say that we're past um, minutes of condolences, um, minutes of silence, uh, statements about the need to take bold action. We need bold action now. And I would urge not only the EU member states, the government of the member states, but also the international community. I think it is the responsibility of the international community to act and address this situation because the migratory route of the Mediterranean, I would say it is the most fatal route ever. Last year, over 3,500 people lost their lives um, trying to cross the Mediterranean. And yet, presumably, EU governments cannot ignore the politics of the situation because of the increasingly hardening stance of many people in Europe against immigration from whatever part of the world. Yes, it's true, but we're speaking about human lives. We're speaking about children and families who are fleeing war. And I think that the first responsibility of the member states is to try, as an EU, uh, open discussions with third countries. We need stability in countries like Libya, something which sometimes we're overlooking. Because at the end of the day, I would think that everyone would like to live in his country if there is peace and stability in their own home country. And these people are fleeing war and they're fleeing insecurity and instability in the hope of a better future. And what they are finding at the end of the day is that we were seeing pictures of two-year-old babies um, and their corpses being washed onto shore. We Europeans we are proud of the values we uphold, and yet we are letting these tragedies happen literally on our doorstep. And I don't think this is acceptable. Um, it is not acceptable not only to the EU member states and their citizens, but this is unacceptable also for the international community. We just can't close our eyes and turn a blind eye to what's happening and let people die in the Mediterranean. What do you make of the figures from 2014 compared to this year? In 2014, the figures are that Italy alone rescued 100,000 migrants from the Mediterranean. And then, since the EU took over these operations in the Med, in 2015, only 5,000 have been rescued. Does that mean that the EU doesn't care or the EU doesn't actually know how to carry out the rescue operations? Myself and other members of the European Parliament, when Triton was going to replace Mario Nostrum, we had serious doubts on its effectiveness and efficiency. Um, and we have to admit, the EU has to admit that Triton is not working out properly. Mario Nostrum used to carry out um, search and rescue operations at a much larger stretch of sea, and Triton is much, much, much more limited in scope, and it is being um, ineffective to address these tragedies we are seeing now. And if you look at the figures, we're still in the middle of April, um, and the figures, the figures are really shocking when you see the amounts of people who are, who are literally losing their lives in the Mediterranean Sea. And I do not agree that this, these search and rescue operations will serve as a pull factor. These people are trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea just the same. They are crossing the Mediterranean Sea in very small boats, loaded boats. We have heard also that the lower deck of the boat um, in this latest tragedy was even logged with people inside. They are crossing the Mediterranean Sea just the same, just going straight into their deaths. And we have the responsibility to act and to do something. And it is up to the international community and the EU member states together to address this situation. So I wouldn't point a finger at one member state or the other, but the international community needs to act and it needs to act now.
Okay, just finally, we've only got uh, less than a minute uh, to go, but would hypocrisy be a fair uh, criticism of the EU governments and possibly especially those in the north who don't have the migrants arriving on their shores? They don't see it physically with their own eyes. We experience what's happening firsthand. We have heard so much about responsibility sharing, but really and truly this talk of responsibility sharing is not being transferred into real and concrete solidarity. And when we're speaking about solidarity, I don't mean only financial aid. Financial and monetary aid is just one aspect of the whole situation. Responsibility sharing means that we need to address the situation as one whole European Union. And that, that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to, that the EU as a whole and all the member states' governments would sit down and try and address this situation and this tragedy together as an EU. Um, because at the end of the day, there is more than one just solution mm -hmm. um, for this mm -hmm. whole situation. We need to start from the third countries. We need to see the search and rescue operations. Okay. We need to see the resettlement policies. So the EU, uh, member states and the governments need to act together. Miriam Dali, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Malta. Uh, that's it from us uh, for the